Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about the story of a young man named Edgar Sura and a gang called the Fifth Street Diablos. At the time, Edgar Sura was a 20-year-old Santa Ana philobotomy student. On October 19, 2012, a woman named Jimmy Beatriz Melendez was in a relationship with the Fifth Street Diablos gang member named Ricardo Acala. Jimmy and Alcala were at a party in territory claimed by the Fifth Street Diablos. Alcala asked Jimmy if we can go for a drive, and Jimmy, Alcala, and two other Diablo members, Isaac Martinez and an individual named Jaime, hopped into her 4C Nissan pickup. Jaime drove. They went to some nearby apartments where the three men got out, looked around for 10 minutes, then got back into the pickup and returned to the party. Later that evening, Alcala again asked the girlfriend to go for a drive. Again, the same four people climbed into Jimmy's pickup, except this time, Jimmy drove. The vehicle went to territory known to the group to be claimed by the rival gang, 17th Street. The Diablos members typically referred to members of the 17th Street gang as cheesers. It was past midnight. The group saw an individual on a bicycle riding away from them. That individual was incorrectly believed to be a rival 17th Street gang member, but it was actually Edgar Sura. Alcala asked, is that a cheeser? And Jimmy was directed to stop the car. She parked it on a street near 17th Street, a major avenue in Santa Ana, and turned off the ignition. Again, the three males got out of the vehicle. About 30 seconds later, the girlfriend heard three to five gunshots. The three males then came back to the car. First Jaime, then Martinez, then finally Alcala. The girlfriend did not see any of them with a gun. Alcala returned with a single flower, which he gave the girlfriend and said, let's get out of here. As the girlfriend started up and they drove away, Alcala asked his fellow gang members, did we get him? The four returned to the party and later the girlfriend dropped off Alcala at an undescribed residence. Before Edgar Sura was shot, he had begged for his life and not to be shot, but Ricardo Alcala shot and killed Edgar Sura anyways. The next day, Alcala asked Jimmy if there had been a news story about the shooting. Jimmy texted Alcala an Orange County Register article about it. Days later, he told her he wanted to leave the area and go on the run. She obtained a hotel room for him. When she saw Alcala a month later in that room, he was in the company of fellow Fifth Street Diablos members. Unbeknownst to members of the Fifth Street Diablos, another person attending the party of October 18th to October 19th was a convicted drug dealer who had become a confidential informant for a Garden Grove police detective. The informant related a conversation she heard from an open kitchen window after the second story by Alcala's group, Alcala was talking to his friends. We caught some full slipping, Alcala said, laughing. He acknowledged the victim wasn't from nowhere, gang speak for unaffiliated, but said they still shot him. After the informer heard about the shooting in the news, she contacted her handler back at the Garden Grove Police Department to tell him she believed she knew who was guilty of the crime. Her departmental liaison then had her set up a sting of Akala in which she would pay Akala for the murder weapon. The operation went as planned. The informant met with Akala and told him, you need to get rid of the gun. Akala agreed. The informant got money from her contact at the police department and met Akala at a garage. She gave him money. He gave her the gun. She gave the gun to the police. Later, both Alcala and the informant were arrested at the hotel, which Jimmy had set up for Alcala. A number of cartridge casings were found at the scene of Sura's murder. These casings came from the gun, which the informant had obtained from Alcala. The ballistics testing, the informant inside Fifth Street Diablos, and Alcala's girlfriend, Jimmy, flipping and testifying against him was more than enough to convict Ricardo Alcala of murder, possession of a firearm by a felon, and street terrorism. Ricardo Alcala was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Co-defendants Isaac Angel Martinez and Jimmy Beatriz Melendez accepted plea deals and were sentenced to 26 and 6 year prison terms.